Today, in this video, I'm going to explain why I prefer sowing seeds in trays rather than directly into the soil. There is nothing wrong with direct sowing, of course. It depends on your circumstances or what you prefer. Direct sowing is better as a plant has a much better time establishing itself and it only has to do that once. It works best for me because I find that seedlings are quite vulnerable in their early stages of development as little critters can easily destroy them, eat them or trample them. Um, the season can also have an impact on germination of seeds and the development of the saplings. Planting them in trays means you can baby them a little bit until they are big enough to transplant and then when they are transplanted they have a little bit of a better chance of survival. You can move them around if you need to as well if they're in trays. Um, so you can move them into the sun or bring them indoors if it gets a little bit chilly at night. So a very good example of the difference between direct sowing and sowing in a tray is the crops that you see in front of you right now. The bottom half, these ones here, I sown a week later than the top half over there. So there isn't much of a difference in their size, um, as you can see. They're fairly equal in size. And I think that's because in the trays I could get the seeds into uh, the sun and I could control their temperatures better than the ones that were directly in the soil. So they had a little bit of a head start. One of the things you're going to need uh, to start planting in trays is obviously the trays. You're going to need some compost or soil. Um, bone meal is useful since it does provide a bit of nutrients for your plants. Some water, um, some labels and a pen. And then, of course, your seeds. Now, you can make your own markers using different types of plastic things lying around, um, like some old folders or uh, ice cream tubs or anything else that has a bit of a flat surface. I found that the ice cream tubs actually make a very nice sturdy plastic um, surface that stays quite nicely in the ground. Uh, you just have to be careful what permanent marker you use so that it doesn't wash off. So for the soil, um, what I do is I take a little bit of soil from the actual garden where I'm going to plant them so that they have a bit of uh, getting used to that, um, the little seeds as they germinate. Then I put some potting soil or, or compost in and that's about two thirds to one third of the garden soil. And then just a little bit of bone meal to give that nutrients to the soil. And then you mix that all up and you are ready to put them into your trays. So with the actual sowing of the seeds, um, you put your soil into your trays and then uh, you spread them nice and evenly and try to leave a little bit of space on top and then just lightly compress it with another tray or something else just so that you have that little bit of extra space. Now I find just watering the surface a little bit um, helps to make the little holes for the seeds and just makes it a little bit more manageable the soil. So you have to check what depth your seeds need to be planted. In this case with the chard, it's about two centimeters down or I think an inch if you're American. Um, so make your holes accordingly uh, to the type of seed that you have. And then I find uh, sprinkling just a little bit of water in there helps the seeds to stick and it helps to trigger that germination. So you can put more than one seed in a hole. I prefer to put one in a hole because I normally have a pretty high germination held where all of the seeds germinate in the trays. You can put two to three just to make sure that uh, if one of them doesn't come up you have um, at least that one that, uh, that comes up. And then just uh, soak it with some water and put it out somewhere and uh, then just wait. 